Good morning, my name is Ian Smith of blog site northernlink.co.uk. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at northernlink. Uh, today is Wednesday the 20th of November. What we're going to do today is run through what's required to set up a trusted application within uh, a link topology. Today's example coincides with the blog post around uh, the trust application and in that example I'm using uh, Johan Velder's um, Sepe Util GUI application to actually do the demonstration. So we'll continue that through to this um, video guide as well. So uh, a couple of things of, of interest just before we start. One is I'll be using again the Cam Studio open source um, video recording uh, suite. Um, and also um, in terms of audio, I'm today using a Sennheiser Century SC630 um, headset as well. So. Right, so let's start. So uh, as you can see, I've got my Link Standard Edition front end open. So uh, currently within my lab, all I've got open is a uh, domain controller and a Standard Edition server. The services um, are already running now on Link, so we're, we're good to go on there. So there's a couple of things we need to do um, just to get the uh, trust application uh, in our uh, lab working. So I've I've taken the liberty of downloading the um, PowerShell commands which Johan uh, talks around. So that's that's now sat on my C drive. On the uh, blog post, I will put links up to Johan's um, GUI so you can download it yourself. Also, you'll require the uh, Link 2013 uh, resource kit, which can be found at Microsoft. I'll again I'll put the download link uh, on the blog site. So let's start. So what we're going to do first, we're just going to open up PowerShell command. We're going to open that as administrator and OK it. So my first point, what I'm going to do is just uh, do get CS site. This will give us information about our sites just for our own understanding. While we're just waiting for that, what I'm also going to do is just going to open up um, Notepad just so we can actually um, capture a little bit of information. So. Back to the uh, PowerShell. So I'm going to put get dash cs site and see what uh, returns of that. So you can see the identity of our site is home labs, site ID is one, the registrar pools and the other information can be seen here. So my standard edition is link se uh, dot northern link dot local. A couple of other bits and pieces in there, for instance, my SIP. Uh, trunk, my uh, external IPs, etc, etc. But we don't need to worry about them at this very moment. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, edit and do a mark and just pull that information out of uh, there and paste it into um, our notepad field. So just so we've got a record. So when we're looking to put the uh, remaining PowerShell in, we, we can actually um, reference it quite easily. So to um, install the trusted application, what we need to do is we need to uh, actually use PowerShell to actually create a trusted application. It can't be done from the link control panel at this very moment. I hope in uh, some stage in, in the life of Link, maybe Link 2014, um, that they do allow it to be actually uh, created within the, the link control panel. But as of today, uh, that isn't available. So um, a couple of PowerShell commands. Again, these are on the blog post, so um, shouldn't be a surprise to anybody, but we'll just type them in any anyway. Uh, new dash CS trusted, and I'm going to tab it, and we want trusted application pool. The ID uh, is our link front end, so link se dot northern link dot local. And also what we need to do is type in our registrar. So I'm just going to tab that again. And that's exactly the same again. Uh, link se dot northern link dot local. We, we could go a step further and put a site ID if we want. So we'll, we'll just do that. Um, and we have to actually put in the, the word site. Oops, typo there. And that is colon one. So that's just mirroring what's up here as the site ID. So we've got our PowerShell command now ready. So all we need to do now is execute it. 
and uh, watch that go in. So if you if you only had one site like I have, and actually this lab which I've uh, spun up this morning, you don't have to put the site ID. It'll just automatically use the the default or or the the only one there. So um, if you've got multiple sites, then uh, that's where you actually uh, change it to be relevant to what um, pool you're actually putting the trust application into. So I've just committed that, and as you can see, it's just run through and uh, created it. So um, nothing nothing special in that it's just a bit of one i could have put the bows on the end so i could see what it was doing but uh in terms of what we need um i didn't actually require to um that's an interesting point what we need to do we still need to run the cs uh, topology and um, we do that but we'll do it a little bit later on in the actual process so now that i've popped that in there i'm now going to uh, jump on to our next one so we've created the application pool but now we have to create the actual um, application itself. So uh, what we're going to do is another PowerShell command, and that is cs-trusted application this time, and we're going to give it the application uh, ID. So we know it is called Sapper Util, and we're going to then associate that with the trusted application pool FQDN. So we know that we actually put this into the um, stand edition pool on on this demonstration. So so we're just going to um, select that again. So that's um, fingers aren't working this morning. So northern link dot local. So that's the um, FQDN of our standard edition. Also, as well, we need to specify what port it's actually going to do the communication. So by default, the port on um, application pools is four seven four eight nine. So there we go. We've got our uh, second command now, which um, we need to run in. So we we just need to commit that and that's running again it's warning us that we still need to do the cs topology which we we can do but just just running through this you can see that it's associated now with um the front end it's part of the trust application pool and the application which it's going to allow through is sepa util which is the uh, command we're going to run so at this point we're, we're quite happy with what we've done it hasn't taken a great deal of time uh, you know all of two minutes to just run this in so the next point is we're going to do Enable dash CS uh, topology. I could have put a T on the end of that. There we go. And we'll just commit that. So our topology is committed into there. So now we're at a point now of um, actually running um, the, the CEPHA util just to make sure what we've put in does actually work. So um, at this point, you do need the resource kit installed, which I've, uh, or oh, sorry, copied down and installed um, onto your front end. So, uh, just a word of warning: if you are going to run the resource kit external from the front end, which you can actually do, uh, if I was honest, um, to do that, you do need the core components of the linked uh, installation running on that machine, which are, which you're going to run this uh, util on. So. Um, just a word of warning there. So for me though, I'm I'm just going to run it straight off the the, the front end standard edition. Um, and if I was honest, that's where I've um, always typically run that from as well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to minimise um, the management shell, and I'm just going to go back and I'm just going to right and click on the command and open up a command prompt. What we need to do now is we need to uh, put in our path um, to actually go to the um, ResKit uh, directory. So we're just going to go back a couple of spaces and then we're going to do cd program files slash um, Microsoft and I'm just tabbing that across slash res. And in there, if I do dir now, we should be able to see it. So we're in the right place where we need to be for the executable. So now let's uh, just run the executable from command prompt. So I'm just going to tab that sepa util. What we need to do then is we need to put our um, server address, sorry, our SIP address of the user we want to actually administer. So I'm putting it here in dot smith as northern link um, dot code at uk because that's the SIP address. I also then need to pass the parameters over to uh, the sepa util. Um, to tell it where to actually go and find this information. So that's link s e dot northern link dot local. So that so that's the path. So all we're doing there is we're just calling the executable. We're telling the executable the the SIP user we want to get the information from, and telling it where to go to get that information. So clicking on enter that, 
that should go away now and utilize the executable and come back with the call forward in group pickup um, and simultaneously ring settings. So there we go, we can see. So the user uh, AOR is our SIP address. The display name is Ian Smith. Uh, unified messaging enabled is false at the very moment. Simultaneously, the ring is false, call forwarding is false. So at this moment, what, we, what we've uh, established is the um, PowerShell commands we ran in for the trusted application are actually working lovely um, and we are able to actually utilize them to actually run the Cepha util against our link environment. So at that point we're, we're quite happy with how uh, things are looking. So the next step now would be to um, actually run Johan's PowerShell commands um, to allow us to use the actual GUI. So um, I'm just going to um, jump onto my um, d uh, downloads folder. And just minimize that for the time being as well actually we don't need that anymore so in our downloads folder um i did copy over the powershell script which uh from yoan has and it's here look start sf start sefer util so i'm going to just open that up and i'm just going to copy that powershell command away from there and put it back in powershell scripts just so we've got uh, a record of it Okay, so now that we've got the location of the Cepha util, which uh, Yuan's kindly created for the community, what we're going to do now is we need to just open up a management shell um, as administrator and actually call that command. So I'm just going to right and click on my um, link management shell, uh, open as administrator. Oops. And let me just make that a bit bigger, just by accident, made it smaller. Okay, so you can see it's there. So we're already at this place here, which is the SRV and score link. So all I'm going to do is going to do CD, and we're just going to uh, continue down the uh, path of where it is. So CD slash slash PowerShell scripts. And now if I do a DIR, we should be able to see that. So exactly, we can do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to again call that um, script from um, the management shell. So call cephautil. And then I'm going to actually tell the Cepha util where to go to find this information about our users. So in here we have to do a dash pool space, and I'm going to do link sc dot northern link dot local, and then it in commit uh, comes up with a security warning, uh, telling us that the uh, the script has come from. Uh, an unknown source so we just need to actually click on R to run and then that will go away and open up the uh, information about our users so as you can see in my lab I've got two users actually in my uh, in this particular lab and that is myself uh, and actually my wife as well so from here what you can do is uh, you can administer them users in terms of setting up their call forwarding, simultaneously ring and also the new feature which came with CU2 back in uh, February 2013 which is the group pickup. Now interestingly you can't have both so just be pretty clear on what your users require. If you, if you are wanting group pickup then you lose the ability to do the other features. Um, I hope that will change with Microsoft but as at the time of writing this blog which is uh, end of November, there's no word from Microsoft that is going to change. Uh, I personally think it's a little bit uh, of a, a poor implementation of the group pickup feature actually, so I do hope it changes. So um, there we go, so that, that is the actual Cephal util and uh, this is um, where we can actually go and actually change some uh, information if we require. So um, that's probably the end of this actual um, blog post. Um, a couple of key takeaways here is just remember the group pickup and the other options can't work in tandem it's one or the other uh, also remember if you've got a powershell command you might get the error stating that uh, the digital sig signage uh, needs to be changed again that's just the set execution policy um, also as well um, on the Cepha util, just give it a little bit of uh, time to actually just catch itself back up. Because as you see, I clicked on Ian Smith, but it didn't. It wasn't instant to actually go and get that information. And and all this GUI is doing is just calling PowerShell commands under the scene. Uh, so uh, that that's all uh, it's doing. So what I can do is uh, just as a, an example before we just uh, stop this uh, video recording is I'm going to set myself to simultaneously ring. Uh, and I'm going to uh, type in my who I want it to ring. So 
I'm going to put the Vic uh, Toria dot Smith, and her SIP address is at Northern Link dot oops dot co dot uk. Victoria Smith at northernlink.co.uk. So I'm just saying, uh, simultaneously ring that and uh, do that. So there we go. It's that simple. I haven't had to leave my uh, my office. Uh, I haven't had to do anything to uh, the user machine to set that up. Unbeknown to that user, that will be set up now on their behalf. That doesn't stop that end user again um, changing that um, uh, particular command or uh, option within their link client. What this what this um, Cephal Util is powerful and uh, uh, allows you to do is if you've got people maybe on maternity leave, annual leave, long term sick and they might um, be a, a power user or have a lot of calls coming into them um, and they haven't given any usernames and passwords uh, to log onto their machines to do the manual change. Uh, the IT administrators can have this tool, can go in, find that user and actually do a forward uh, to other uh, people or to a, um, a response group, I guess. Okay, so actually just one more thing uh, just before we actually finish. Um, what I'm going to just show you is, uh, as you can see, it's come back within the, the GUI that is actually put the simultaneous ring. But let, let's just jump on to the uh, Ian Smith client just to see what it actually says within the, that client uh, environment. So. Let me just fire up um, ian.smith, just drag that over. So here we go. So this is um, one of my clients. So it's logged on. We can log it on as me. So let's just do that. OK, I'm just going to jump to the desktop. Link is already running. So uh, just close them numbers up. So so this is uh, essentially uh, the other way of actually setting up the, the simultaneous the ring, uh, as you know. Um, so what, this didn't have anything set, so let's have a look and see what actually is set now on this machine. So you can see it's got a square box around it, so simultaneous the ring is set, and square box around it you can see it's actually set, and it says ring me and sip Victoria Smith at northernlink.co.uk. So um, using our GUI has done exactly what we wanted it to do. So um, I'd like to um, put thanks out to Johan because it's made certainly um, my life a lot easier um, as part of my uh, professional life of deploying Link. Um, and it's a, and a great little uh, uh, GUI to keep in uh, what I class my Link tool bag. So uh, thanks again to Johan and uh, put all the plaudits and credits over to him as part of the blog post. So thank you for listening. Bye bye.